Good morning, builders. I'm Philip Kingston from Applied AI from uh, Abu Dhabi. Came in yesterday from the UAE. Pleasure to be here. We want to share this morning some of the uh, applications we've been uh, using AIP for over the last six months. We have a new uh, domain, which was not cheap, which we bought, which was opus.com, which is Latin for work, that we're building a whole workflow generation and intention capture layer on top of the uh, AIP workflow execution layer that was introduced earlier. So what we do is we look at these back office functions, which are typically outsourced to business process outsourcing companies offshore, where these companies typically receive an input file and then do some work, then return an output file. So these are our endpoints. And what we need to do is find the transformation that takes the input to the output at scale. So we can have rapid onboarding with enterprises looking to adopt AI and replace or augment their BPO providers. So we have an architecture here. On, on your left, we have um, basically model inference and data being stored inside the Foundry AIP ecosystem. This allows us to do secure inference and not have to worry about any of the ML operations stuff. And a lot of our enterprise clients for data integrations, we like to store all of the um, data sets we use for RAG and other things inside the AIP infrastructure. Just drilling down on that a little bit, this is between about data sets, media sets that we need to use to encapsulate the work graph, which is how we codify all the kind of knowledge work tasks and the transition of state between all the things you can do with a given input document, taking the output document to reduce the size of things to find the most optimal workflow to get the job done. So we use, we use Pipeline Builder, we use published queries, um, and a variety of other things on top of the um, OSDK and uh, media set data set architecture. So here is a, a short demo. If you go to opus.com right now, um, this is an example of a workflow intention capture use case that we're using for lead generation right now. The real platform launches in Q1 next year. But what this is doing is allow someone to upload an existing services contract with their outsource provider. And we take that contract and all the scope of work details and we build a workflow from that information. And then we put human reviews in all the right places to ensure we don't have things like compounding error um, or any kind of uh, key, key moments and decisions are not made without the right kind of human, human supervision. So our goal function there is that we don't um, sort of design or have a goal function that we're going to replace humans with AI. This is the wrong goal function in our view. It's what is the right combination of humans and AI working together to minimize a cost function of like time, you know, obviously compute and the human labor costs. How do we create the right fusion there that makes sense, that delivers um, against that customer objective? So here we're building a, a code repo um, basically to support that opus.com feature I just showed you, where we need to be able to use a simple implementation in TypeScript to do some inference on an LLM in, in this simplified demo. Um, and it just shows how quickly we built in eight hours the entire um, services contract reading and ingestion of that workflow intention was an eight hour lift in total. Um, so it's it, the chat completion work is basically the same as you would get with any third party model provider, but without having to deal with all the variation that happens when you rely on third party APIs that you don't control. So basically, for us, a huge value add is that we get state-of-the-art models without having to use them from the vendors of those models, which typically have sort of not really institutional grade um, delivery systems for their models. So <clears throat> they do things with the right intentions, like they'll upgrade API functionality so it's better. The problem is you've relied on the old way they did it last week, and then you know it may not work, it may not be sort of forward compatible with the improvements that they're making. So we see the stability of the API implementations um, of these models as a huge feature for us, in addition to um, cost advantages of paying for compute not tokens, which um, makes a difference at, at scale. Looking at workflow execution, here is a use case we, we have live with, with hospitals in a number of countries, which is medical coding, which is taking encounter documentation. So a, patient in a hospital goes in, things happen, taking those records and producing a international standard kind of code result. So it's a simple. this is a simplified version, but there's nodes uh, and edges here. Um, we can build this in Pipeline Builder extremely quickly, and we focus just on the protein, so we don't have to worry about all the ML operations, all the handoff, like th these details we just don't have to worry about. 
and non-domain, like non-technical people can build these workflows. So it allows the subject matter experts who know a lot about medical coding, but nothing about software. They can basically sit here, add transformations, refine prompts, do these kinds of things. There, there is some tech and the, sort of the document ingestion stuff, which is non-trivial, but it means that we can make refinements very easily. And every hospital, whilst these standards are international, uh, in theory, everyone has a slightly different way of doing things. So we need to be able to branch these things out, allow kind of different logical operations, uh, calculations at the end of the process. Um, we need to be able to adopt to whatever hospital um, quirks, idiosyncratic implementations that they have. So this sort of back end of the process, once we have the workflow built, we can go in and make those idiosyncratic changes um, very, very fast. So we like this for workflow execution of um, these kinds of sensitive document handling use cases. So um, one thing that is extremely valuable here is the transparency we get on the state of each of these executions. So you can see basically granularly all the stuff that's happening in your workflow, what status it's up to, and it feels very good to know. You can see like across the whole to infrastructure and platform stack, what's going on, where it's up to, diagnose any issues, like forecast time, and these kind of things. Lastly today, we just want to talk about some state-of-the-art stuff we've been doing around the ARP solution. And this is around this workflow generation problem where you need to find how the input got to the output without any information. Um, so we have a, a kind of fairly large work graph and um, large work model that we've been building over the last six months. We actually have a, a paper uh, that we launched today, or oh, yesterday, the 12th, which is available if anyone uh, wants to dig into the weeds on this. But we can use um, you know, code workspace to bring in models, run inference, use them across Foundry. Again, a lot of the AI people are very computer science technical, machine learning technical, but not necessarily very good at backend MLOps, DevOpsy kind of stuff. So this takes all that away. They don't have to worry about it. They can see if a new approach is better than the old approach. They can play around with it on production data, on our actual production work graph. So they can back test against all jobs. They can implement state of the art. They can see if it's better. If it is, roll it out. If it's not, drop it. And this is extremely hard to do outside of the AIP uh, framework. So. Yeah, this, this paper sh should be interesting. Anyone looking at this sort of workflow intention capture and generation problem, um, a lot of this has been built around Palantir AIP. So uh, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you.